Once again, salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين بخاتم النبيين وحبيب إله العالمين العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد أبي القاسم محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله محمد وآل محمد لا تجعل مع الله إلها آخر فتقعد مذموما مخذولا وقضى ربك ألا تعبد إلا إياه وبالوالدين أحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا صلوات على محمد وآل محمد respected brothers and sisters in our discussion and reflections on Surah Mubarakay Isra. We discussed until verse number 21. From verse number 22, onward is very very interesting part of surah mubarakay isra all the way till ayat number 39 lot of discussions are in this few verses which require maybe a little bit more detailed explanation and discussion. Let me quickly read for you the translation of these verses, few verses. Verse number 22, La taj'al ma'allahi ilahan akhar and do not make with Allah another deity and their pie became censored and makhzulan forsaken 
وقد ربك الا تعبد and your lord has decreed that you not worship except him wa bil walidain ahsana and to parents good treatment imma yablughanna indakal kibar ahaduhuma whether one or both of them reach old age with you say not to them even uff and do not repel them but speak to them a noble word salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad so you saw this verse starts with verse number 22 with command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to avoid shirk fala taj'al ma allah ilahan akhar and the second verse also insists on tawhid وَقَدَا رَبُّكَ أَنْ لَا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّهُ This is decree of your Lord that not to worship except Him. And then وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ أَحْسَانَ All the way. It starts with the rights of parents and how we are supposed to treat our parents. Discussion. two three verses so important discusses this very very crucial topic then it goes to family then it goes to some other important commands then it speaks about lot of evils and ill challenges and problems in society ah come ah come commandments are there in these verses but what is interesting that these whole verses this whole portion starts with denial of shirk and proclamation of tawhid and how it ends if you look at verse number 39 what it says zaulika mimma Oh, how high a car, Rabbuka, Minal Hikma. All these commandments explained over this almost fifteen verses, sixteen verses, whatever, are revealed to you from your Lord, O Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. They are Minal Hikma. they are based upon wisdom wisdom hikma and then again what it says wala taj'al ma allah ilahan akhar fatulqa fi jahannam maluman madhura again fala taj'al again how it started fala taj'al ma allah ilahan akhar fala taj'al ma allah ilahan akhar so a start of this whole discussion with tawhid and shirk and conclusion of these ahkam and these commandments also with tawhid and shirk you know why listen please carefully beautiful you know why because every obedience of allah and every good act and deed which is commanded here the foundation of that good deed is tawhid they are branches of tawhid and whatever is evil like qatl like zina like tabzeer like i don't know doing fraud in business all that which will come in these verses one after other they are all 
result of shirk. So whatever good is here, positive commandments are, are basically branches of Tawheed, are based upon Tawheed. And whatever evil issues are which have been um, restricted and forbidden, you know, they are basically uh, branches of shirk. How? Quickly. You know how? In this manner. That when you do anything good, why you do good? Because you have followed command of Allah. You have followed hadith. Huh? Or even if you have followed your aql and hadith or ayah or even clear-cut aql, basically it goes back to Allah. Ayat is ayat of Allah. Kalam of the Prophet is also وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا أَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَىٰ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوْهَىٰ That's also nothing but Kalam of Allah, basically, command of Allah. So all the good deeds we are basically based upon Tawheed. And what about bad deeds? What about evil actions? How come they are result of shirk? Yes, they are result of shirk, my brother. You know why? Because when you commit a sin, now murder, zina, tabzir, and others, ghibat, I don't know, whatever. If you are committing it by mistake, that is not regarded sin. By forgetting it, not regarded sin. Somebody forces you to do that, not regarded sin, not sin. So when it is sin, when you do it, out of your own free will, without pressure, and knowingly, deliberately. Okay? So when you deliberately, you know that this is haram, this is banned and restricted by Allah. Hmm? And nobody is forcing you. Out of your own free will, after knowing that it is against command of Allah, what you do? You still do it. How? Why you do it? Because you accept command of your hawa and nafs, greed, I don't know, desire of self, or you accept command of shaitan. And that is basically shirk. When you prefer command of anyone else on command of Allah, it is basically shirk. That's what Quran, for example, says, you know, which is a, it appears to be a, you know, difficult verse, where Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, huh? where Almighty Allah says, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ Quran says that majority of the people who have iman, they are mushrik also. How that is possible? How that is possible? That majority of those people who believe in Allah, Iman Billah, they have faith in Allah, they are mushrik also. Quran is saying, what does it mean? This is the meaning. They are not technically mushrik in the sense of fatwa, that now you must kill them or they will become najis. Huh? No, 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 not that, that takfir issue. No, no, no. Technically, deeply talking, when they refuse command of Allah, and when they prefer self or shaitan or greed or whatever over command of Allah, basically they are committing shirk. Basically they are associating with Allah, ilahan akhar. And that is the meaning. That while they are mu'min, while they are believer, still at the same time they also commit shirk. وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ so, brothers and sisters, in other words, Tawheed is very important. To avoid shirk, 
is very important. And this very verse, first verse which we recited, what it says? La taj'al ma'allahi ilahan akhar. Don't commit shirk. What will happen? Fataq'ud. First of all, you know, taq'ud means sitting. Sitting is, is a condition of humility. Standing is condition of power. Sitting is condition of surrender. He say, if you will commit, you know what will be situation? You will be a surrendered person. You will not be an independent person. You will not be a powerful person. Madhmuman. Condemned. Condemned. Why condemned? Because you have decided to follow something very low over something very high. This is mazamma, this is condemnation. Makhzulan. What is makhzulan? For a second. Left alone. You know why? Because when you depend on non-Allah, ghayrullah, ah, ghayrullah will not come along with you very long way. You will depend on shaitan. On the day of qiyamah, shaitan will say, sorry, I did not force him to commit sin. They have aql. They have everything. Why they followed me? I got nothing to do. They left you alone. Ah. You depend on this dunya, money, position, property, status, popularity, influence, whatever. It disappears like that. Nobody even asks, who are you? Today you are a millionaire, 20,000 people are around you like flies. Huh? All of a sudden you lose everything. Nobody even asks you, how are you? <laughs> Nobody even asks you, how are you? فَلَا تَجْعَلْ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَوْهًا أَوْخَرْ فَتَقْعَدُوا مَزْمُومًا مَخْذُولًا Don't commit shirk because the result of shirk is humiliation, weakness, loneliness, dependence. That's it. Don't think that the dignity you earn by money no, this is not a dignity. It will go like that. Taqadu mazmuman maqsula. Second verse. Wa qada rabbuka Allah ta'abudu illa iya. Don't do shirk. Surrender to Allah to hate. Qada rabbuka. Allah ta'abudu illa iya. Decree. Qada means. Definite, definite decision, decree. Your Lord declared decree that you should not worship anyone but Him. You must not depend on anyone but Him. And amazingly, immediately after Tawheed, after saying don't commit shirk, and after saying surrender to Allah and only worship Allah, what is the third thing? وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنَ أَحْسَانًا And be good to your parents. This chapter is really very serious and important chapter, brothers and sisters. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنَ أَحْسَانًا Number one. Walidain parents did not say Father did not say mother. Both. No difference. Did not say if they were Muslim or they were kafir. No. They were Muslim. They were non-Muslim. Still be good to them. Did not say if they were people of good akhlaq, good character, pious people or fasik and fajr. Terrible people, characterless people, bad people. No condition. When it comes to treating parents with good, no condition. And with parents, be good. That's it. 
like in other verses of Quran, you know very clearly. Even it says that if they command you to disobey Allah or commit shirk, فَلَا تُتِحِمَا Surah Luqman, don't follow them. Don't follow them. If they say they become mushrik or if they say to commit sin, no, you must not do that. You must not obey them. But still, وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَ But still you must treat them in this world with good treatment. They are inviting you toward disobedience of Allah. They are inviting you to commit shirk. But Quran is saying, don't obey them, but don't mistreat them. Don't misbehave with them. Allahu Akbar. Ahsana, ahsana, ahsana. Ahsan is a very, very general term. Every good comes under the headline of Ahsan. From speaking to them nicely, from looking at them with the, you know, look of mercy and care, to taking care of them, giving them money, I don't know, washing them, I don't know putting them in bed. I don't know everything, everything, everything. Everything is under Ahsan. Ahsan is a very broad word. Everything is Ahsan. So no limit. So validan without condition. Ahsan method of treating them also unconditional. Everything. Everything good you're supposed to do to your parents and amazing is this brothers and sisters please listen carefully that how almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connects issue of parents with tawheed Allahu Akbar not one or two place at four places in Quran almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it speaks about issue of parents, rights of parents, good treatments of parents, immediately after Tawheed. In Islam, in Deen, is anything else more important than Tawheed? No, nothing. And as soon as the Quran speaks about Tawheed, it speaks about parents. Surah Mubarak Baqarah, verse number 83. La ta'abuduna illallah wa bil ahsana. Don't worship anyone but Allah and be good to the children, wife, parents. Surah Nisa, verse number 36. Wa'abadullah, wa la tushriku bahi shay'an, ba bil walidayne ahsana. Worship Allah, don't commit shirk, and be good to parents. Surah An'am, verse number 151. Allah tushriku bahi shay'an, wa bil walidayne ahsana. Don't commit shirk, be muwahid, be monotheist, and be good to the parents. Allahu Akbar. And then, of course, in Surah Mubarakah Isra, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَنْ لَا أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّهَ يَغْوَ بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ أَحْسَانَ And then, again in Surah Mubarakah, Luqman, amazing, again connecting, saying, أَنِشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَا وَلِدَيْكِ Command of Allah is to be thankful to me. Me means who? Allah. And thankful to your parents. It, it's a very clear message that there is a deep connection between Tawheed and between uh, uh, good treatment of the parents. Why you worship Allah? Because Allah created you. Huh? Why you go and look for Allah? You know, one of the main reasons why we must believe in Allah, because shukre munaim, one of the arguments we have in Aqaid. You know, because our nature is to be thankful. Hmm? You know, in the Tawheed we have this chapter that why, why, why we must talk about Allah? Why, why we need to discuss there is Allah or not? There is a creator or not? You know why? We say it is natural. So why it is natural? He said, look, if I give you, my brother, listen, a glass of water, 
what you will do my brother naturally you will, what you say thank you na why i have done a favor to you anybody taught you no in school they taught you no no it's your nature insan human being is like that i give you a glass of water automatically you say thank you right if someone has given you life water favors you are drawn in the favors don't you think you must say thank you to him that is natural so if you want to say thank you to him you want to know who is who is that person who is he i must thank you and that's how you look for allah and that's how you speak about allah now similar manner is in case of parents because parents are in the same line allah has given you existence allah has given you existence if allah wouldn't have given you existence you were not here na allah brought you in existence if you exist if you are here why because allah brought you but how this existence came to you through parents hmm. so parents in that line and therefore quran says anishkurli wale walidayk to be thankful for me and for your parents same chapter shukra manam why we must be good to parents exactly why we must worship allah same argument salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad now listen carefully brothers after giving this statement very strongly verse number 23 says imma yablughanna indaka bal indakal kibar ahaduhuma aw kilahuma if one of them or both of them reached old age near by you ha uh, one mufassir is very beautiful he is he picks up some very interesting points huh? he says in that please listen carefully brothers please listen carefully what he says he says allah says when they reach old age near by you it's indirectly saying to us don't throw your parents in old age home in that they must reach old age near by you by you with you not in old age home in that okay that is in that fala taqul lahum of look when parents are young mashallah they are the one who provide you they are the one who provide you house shelter food and they don't depend on you they are healthy alhamdulillah rabbil alamin everything is nice you smile with them they smile with you they love you lay them now everything is fine quran says test of iman is when they become old and dependent when they become old and dependent now you start treating them as a burden on you why i have to must take care of them i must wash them i must feed them i must give them medication i must take them to hospital i must take them to doctor i must do this i must do that they don't have any money they are not you know positive elements of the society when they will die ya allah when i will get rid of them allahu akbar and what quran says fala taqul lahuma uff wala tanharhum don't even say of akh to them imam jafar sadiq alayhi salatu wassalam salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ha imam sadiq alayhi salatu wassalam says that if there was anything lighter than of quran would have mentioned that you know of is the lightest thing is the lowest thing you can express your 
arrogance to your parents. Ah. If there was something lower than available, we would have mentioned that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Uff. La taqul lahuma uff. Don't say ah to them. Absolutely. Wala tanhar huma. Don't shout on them. Don't shout on them. Wa qul lahuma qawlan kareema. And speak to them in a very noble, respectful manner. Qawlan kareema. Really, really so important, so beautiful it is. Teachings of Islam when it comes to parents. Allah Akbar. Ha. You will not believe, brothers and sisters, that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw somebody in Tawaf of Kaaba carrying his mother very old, she can't walk, sick. He was carrying his mother on his shoulders and making tawaf. He asked this question, Ya Rasulullah, did I pay, did I pay back, did I pay back to my mother? You know what Prophet said? You know what Rasulullah said? He said, my brother, you did not pay even, you did not even pay back. Pain of that one cry of your mother when she gave birth to you. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Huh? Someone came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Imam Sadiq says, that someone came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm a very well-trained soldier. I know how to use sword. I'm a good, trained soldier. And you have announced jihad. Everybody must go to war. But I got a mother who is not well. And she is not happy. I leave her here and go to jihad. What I should do. It, he was on the forefront, in the war front. Prophet says, Irja, return, go back. Fakun and be with your mother. And then what Prophet said, Fawalladi Baasani Bil Hakke Le Unsiha Bikalailatan Khairun min jihadin fi sabirillah sanatan. Allahu Akbar. Prophet said, I swear by that God who has sent me as prophet to you people. One night, giving her company, your mother, is better than jihad fi sabirillah whole year. Whole year jihad one side. Of course, this is jihad, when jihad is not wajib aini, huh? Of course, we're not talking about when jihad becomes compulsory, you know, and there are other people, enough people available to go for jihad. If there is nobody, then no, of course, then you have to leave your mother, father, everybody. That's a different story. But when there are other people available, no, preferences with the parents, Allahu Akbar. I can, brothers and sisters, carry on discussing this discussion, Allahu Akbar. You know, how really this is that Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Quran says, And Quran says, وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Not enough. وَاخْفِزْ لَهُمَا جَنَاهَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ سَغِيرًا Allah. Allahu Akbar. Not only speak to them nicely, respectful manner. Allahu Akbar. But Allahu Akbar, lower in front of them 
wings of humanity. Allahu Akbar. What a beautiful wings of humanity like that in front of them. Means bow down in front of them. Be, be little in front of them. Not to be boss in front of them. Oh. Someone come to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and say, Ya Rasulullah, my children do not treat me well. One day I was rich. I provided them everything. Today I have nothing. They all the time curse me that I am a burden for them. And they have to pay my maintenance and this and this and that. Will you believe hadith says the tears came in the eyes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam. Tears came, Prophet cried. He said, what type of human being they are that they forget. And that's what Quran says. وَقُلْ not only, not only treat them nicely, take care of them, be with them, speak to them nicely, don't rude with them, don't shout on them, don't even make ah in front of them. But even when you stand for dua, your first dua must be for your parents. Baqul Rabbi irham huma. O Allah, be merciful on them. How much rights of parents is, is connected. That even when you are for in front of your Allah, remember your parents. And Quran teaches us how to remember them. Even the way we are supposed to remember is a lesson. You say, Rabbir ham huma. O Allah, have mercy upon them like they were merciful to me when I was young. Allah, what Even this dua is a reminder, my brother, my sister, that one day they were merciful with you. They were caring for you. They were compassionate for you. Allah, what Allah. Dua even is for the parents. And this Ahsan, therefore I said Ahsan is a very broad headline. From good treatment, including, and you make dua for your parents, that's also Ahsan. Now your parents died like my one, unfortunately. You do not have that opportunity to serve them. But still Ahsan continues. Someone asked from Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, my parents passed away. How I can do Ahsan to my parents? Imam replied, You can do Ahsan still. Why not? You can make dua for them. You can recite Quran for them. You can give sadaqa on their behalf. Huh? You can remember them when you do something good. Huh? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then Imam said, That hadith which I have a number of times mentioned, that there are children who are disobedient in their life of their parents. And there are children who are disobedient and ask after death of their parents. Somebody asks, Ya Rasulullah, how that is possible? Parents passed away. How I can be disobedient? I say, yes. When you don't remember them in dua. When you don't remember them in giving sadaqa on their behalf. Charity on their behalf. When you don't even visit their grave. When you don't make a fatiha for them. Night of Juma comes. They come in front of your door. My brother Hadith says. Night of Juma or afternoon of Juma. Your parents souls they come in front of your door. And they look at you. Will you give something to them? Will you give some gift to them? Will you give five rand to a fakir, to a beggar on their behalf? Will you recite a Surah Al-Mubarakatul Fatiha for their Isale Sabab? Allahu Akbar. You don't do nothing. This is also disobedience. Allahu Akbar. Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahu 
سو وقف لہما جنا چنا حضل من الرحما وقل قل رب رحم ہما کما رب بیانی صغیرا اینڈ ہیو اللہ مرسی اپن دم ایز دے براٹ می اپ وین آئی واز یگ اسمال ورس نمبر ٹوینٹی فائیو لاسٹ ورس ویری امپورٹنٹ آلسو اینڈ ویل کنکلوڈ ان شاء اللہ رب کم اعلم بما فی نفوس کم ان تکونو صالحین فانه کانا للعوابین غفورا رب کم اعلم یور لارڈ از اویر از موسٹ نالجبل of what is within inside you. Hmm? If you should be righteous in intention, then indeed he is ever to the often returning to him forgiven, forgiving. Did you understand what happened? What is the connection of this verse to the Abba? This verse is saying that when parents are old, They nag, they sometimes shout, they become really, really serious burden. Sometimes you lose your temper. Sometimes you lose your control. And all of a sudden, sometimes by mistake, you say something not good. You become rude. You shout. Quran says, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أَوْفْ Don't even say, Akh to them. Don't shout on them. Don't even look at them with a look. Don't give them a look like that. Allahu Akbar. Hadith says that a child who gives a look to his parents, uh, a look, you know, a look like that, look of arrogance. Hadith says this child will not be able to even smell fragrance of Jannah. Uh, and you know, fragrance of Jannah is going millions of miles. Even people of Jahannam can smell. But somebody who looks at parents with that look, Allahu Akbar. Hadith says, he will never be able to smell fragrance of Jannah. But now, sometimes it happens. Person loses temper, becomes tired, says something. Not so good. Quran says, Almighty Allah says, Allahu A'lam. Allah is well aware of what is your intention. You didn't want to be rude. You didn't want to be arrogant. You didn't want to be disrespectful toward your parent. No. Just you lost your temper. Just you could not control yourself. Just for that while your sabr was too much. You could not keep it. No problem. Make tawbah. Allah is very forgiving. If your intention is good and you return to him, he is very forgiving for those who returns to him. Yes, brothers and sisters. May Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to be really among those who are Ahsan with parents, Muhsineen with parents in their lifetime and after their lifetime. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Any question? Okay. If there is no question, then inshallah. We will continue tomorrow night. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.